Hey, this is Cody Bacher coming to you with The Scoop. And just wanted to provide a little more insight as to how we do get to that sugar scoop. So eventually, these sugar beets will be processed into fine white granulated sugar. We make a high quality product in our factory, but that all starts out in the field. So this crop has been growing all season and we've been slowly nurturing that crop to get it to this point and our harvest is nearly complete but to finish out and to get that product in the pile and then into the factory i'm going to take you on a little bit of a journey to show you what the full process is so our harvest process is fairly extensive with the most crops the farmers will cut off the material above the ground and for the most part, that's all they have to do. They don't have to get really intensive with the soil and dealing with the crop to get it to its final product. But here in sugar beets, out in the field, we not only have to remove that top portion, doing, doing that process to get rid of the foliage and the scalp on the beet, but then we have to dig into the ground to lift that product, that root crop, out put it into some trucks and put it in a pile for storage long term and eventually pick it back up to get it into our factory. So to start out with, this is kind of a short, short version of how we get that product into the pile. So you can see Dave's coming in the tractor here. Dave's been running the foliator for at least a few years. He's doing a really good job here. You can see the crop getting the tops removed here. And as he makes this pass, the crop is completely defoliated and scalped to remove the growing point. So after we've got that beet crop defoliated and scalped, then we really got to dig into the dirt. So to harvest that crop, we've got to use our harvesters that actually dig down into the ground, usually two to four inches deep, and the harvester pulls that root up, runs it into the lifter bed, scrubs a little bit of dirt off as much as possible, load it into the trucks, and send them on their way to the factory. And that machine is running running a lot of dirt and a lot of volume through it, so it can, it can be uh, a little bit difficult to, uh, to handle sometimes if it's sticky, if it's been raining and it's a little wet. But now we've, uh, we've got an opportunity to clean that crop up and get it into the pile. So the harvester comes along and it uh, picks up the beets. those beets in a truck, we bring them in here to the piling site, stop off at the scale, and talk to the scale house, hand them a field card. The scale house identifies the truck. Yeah. And we get our direction on which piler we should go to dump at. So what piler are we going to? Four. Going to piler four. We're in an end dump. So once we get down there, we'll be able to unload the beets and get them into the pile. So we'll pull on to the end dump on the piler. Get nice and lined up. Some pilers, it's a little tight to squeeze in in between the end dump hopper and the dirt truck up in front. 
But Dustin's been doing this long enough, he knows the right way. So Dustin gets the green light, hits his remote to start running the belt on the live bottom. And he's unloading in the back there. You can watch the whole thing through his mirror. And as long as he's getting the green light, he keeps unloading and it'll take about two to three minutes to unload the truck to get it into the pile. And Dustin, how many loads have you hauled today? 15? Yeah, no, one an hour about. Sure. If we were close, this one might get stretched out since we're so far west. That negative field is close. About one an hour. Yeah. Maybe 40 minutes. Of it. 40 minutes to an hour turn times. And making good progress. But we got some good yields out there. It takes a little while. As long as we can get them all into the pile, we're good. This pile, we're just about to finish up. And they're starting to bring the boom height down. And as the beats go into the piler, we've got the side dump waiting over there to dump, you can see. So they'll be unloaded, and the beats will go into that main conveyor, and go up the incline, drop into the screener up there where they get another chance to get scrubbed up, cleaned up a little bit, and they'll get conveyed into the pile on the stacker conveyor. So they gave him the green light, that means he's unloaded. Justin's got his remote and he closes the gate. And we're all set to go. Back to the scale house and back to the field for another load. So as we pull back up to the scale, the trucks get their load saved. We don't print tickets anymore, so everything's saved electronically, uploaded to the server, and the grower has that information back within minutes. Coming into the scale. The Val watch is real close. We got our information there on the screen. Val saves the load. We get our green light and we're good to go back to the field. So our pilers here at SMBSC, most of them are combination pilers where we can dump end dumps on one side and side dumps on the other side. You can see as the trucks pull on, they get lined up and parked in position on the piler to be unloaded. And these machines are capable of dumping about 20 or so, maybe 25 loads of each of those trucks per hour. So we're moving a lot of material through those pilers. And as they get uh, unloaded, the beats make their way through the machine and up onto the pile. So as we transition at the piler from dumping one truck and switching to the adjacent one, You can see the side dump beats flowing into the piler onto the main conveyor. And as they come up, they get one more chance to get scrubbed on the screen rollers. We'll get a little bit more dirt off of the beats, so we're putting a clean product into the pile. Our operator, Desiree, keeps the piler running and makes sure that the beats are unloaded correctly. Kathy runs the boom, and that boom conveyor brings the beats all the way up to put them in the pile and we make a nice uniform pile all the way across you can see we've got ventilation pipe installed and that delivers some air for cooling the beats down in October and eventually in December and January when we get cold enough weather we'll start to freeze down some of the piles after our beets have been in the piles for anywhere from one day up to six months, we've got to get those beets picked back up so we can bring them to the factory. 
at SMBSC, we partner with Trans Systems. They're able to come in, pick up those beats with the payloader, load them onto trucks, and get them into the factory for us. This is a delicate process because we don't want to damage the beets, keep all the sugar in them as we can. So they're very careful in their loading process to pick up the beets, dump them into the trucks, and they're able to deliver that high quality product into the factory for us. Once the Trans Systems drivers make their way back to the factory after rehauling the beets, they'll bring each load up to our dry handling system where we've got six hoppers that they're able to dump into. So you can see a truck pulling on here. This is a long belly dump with two hoppers in it and he's carrying a roughly 32 ton load where he's going to be able to dump into our dry handling system. The two piles on either side of me here are the last two piles that we'll bring into the factory. They have to store all the way until April, so we'll freeze them down hard this winter, put some insulation blankets on them, tarp them, and they'll store perfectly well until that time. We'll still bring a very high quality product into the factory for them to do their thing with them to make that fine white granulated sugar with. That's the end of that harvest process all the way from the field to the factory. Thanks for tagging along.